Chapter 22. Remembering is just an invention of the mind. Spring has sprung, Freak says, and so are we. This is the day school gets out, and we're taking the long way home. By now, I've been carrying him around on my shoulders for almost a year. We call it walking high, and even if we haven't been going on any dangerous quests lately, so the fair Gwen won't have to throw a fit, Freak hasn't exactly given up on slaying dragons. The world is really and truly green all over, he says. Do you remember what it used to be like back in the Ice Age when the glaciers covered the earth and the saber-toothed tiger roamed the frozen night? Uh, no, I say. How can I remember that? I wasn't even born. Don't be a pinhead, he says. Remembering is just an invention of the mind. I go, what is that supposed to mean? It means that if you want to, you can remember anything, whether it happened or not. Like, I can remember what it was like in the Ice Age. I kept trying to invent stuff. The wheel, central heating, indoor plumbing. But the Neanderthals were happy with just a campfire and a fur coat. If you guessed that Freak's been reading a book about the Ice Age, you're right. He's been seeing a saber-toothed tiger behind every bush, except that so far, all of them have turned out to be stray cats. Or once it was this skunk, and it's a good thing, I can run fast or we'd have to soak in tomato juice which is the only way to get rid of the skunk, the stink. Inventing electricity would be tough, he says, without copper wire and magnets. But I could handle inventing a compass. All you have to do is rub the needle. That way, everyone could head south and get away from the glaciers. First, you need to invent a time machine, I say, so you can go back there and give all the cavemen a hard time about indoor plumbing. Freak goes, you don't need a time machine if you know how to remember which is something I'll always remember, him saying that and me trying to figure it out. Freak's birthday is a couple of days after school gets out, and the fair Gwen has already made it clear he's not getting a ride on the space shuttle. Thirteen is supposed to be extra special, he says. At least the least you could do is get my name on the list. Or how about a linear accelerator, just a small one, so I can split a few atoms? The fair Gwen goes, I suppose this means you're going to be an obnoxious teenager. The deal is, this is really two birthdays for the price of one, because Freak the Mighty is almost a year old. Talk about a prodigy, Freak says. One year old, and he's already on his way to the ninth grade. The fair Gwen just rolls her eyes when we talk like that. Freak says we can't expect her to understand, because you can't really get what it means to be Freak the Mighty unless you are Freak the Mighty. Anyhow, the party is just a family affair because Freak isn't supposed to get overexcited, which is like saying the moon isn't supposed to go around the earth. Last year, I got the ornithopter, he says. This year, why not a helicopter? A real one, though. You can't expect a teenager to play with toys. Why not a jet plane, the fair Gwen says. Cool, Freak says, a Learjet. What he's really getting, and I've been sworn to secrecy, is this new computer, the one he's been drooling over in his computer magazines. It comes with a modem, which means at least if he has to stay home for some reason, he can do school over the phone. The idea is I'd be there in the classroom with a matching computer. The only problem is I don't know squid about computers. You'll learn, the fair Gwen says. Kevin will teach you. But why would he have to stay home, I ask her. We're out in the kitchen and she and Graham are frosting the cakes and Freak is hanging out in the living room, acting like he intends to have a party every day for the rest of his life. Maybe he won't have to stay home, the fair Gwen says, and she and Graham kind of lock eyeballs for a second, the secret code that mothers have. This is just in case, Max. I think maybe he already guessed about the computer, I say. That's why he's jerking your chain about the space shuttle ride and Lear jets. I'm not surprised, the fair Gwen says. You can't keep anything from Kevin. Freak hardly touches his supper. He says he's saving his appetite for the cake. And finally, we're all done eating except Grimm, who keeps rubbing his belly and rolling his eyes and telling the fair Gwen she's a genius. What a genius she is with fresh peas and new potatoes and salmon, and he'll just have to get have a smidgen more, thanks. Until finally, Graham clears her throat and smiles, and Grimm has to apologize for being such a pig. The funny thing is, when at last they do bring out the cake, Freak asks me to flame out the candles, which makes while well, he makes the wish. And then he doesn't even touch his piece. He just sort of pushes it around his plate. I figure he's so excited about getting the new computer that he's lost his appetite. Not that he's letting on he doesn't feel good. He's acting just as wise and smart-mouthed as ever. 
I should have asked for earplugs, he says, when we're done singing happy birthday. You'd better check the glassware for cracks. Hush up, the fair Gwen says, or we'll give you another chorus. When she brings out the computer, he acts so surprised and happy. Maybe he really is surprised. Right away, he wants to turn it on and show off what a brain he is because it's his birthday. We all have to sit there and admire him and go, amazing, fantastic. And Kevin, how did you know that? And so on. He's showing, she's showing Grimm how to play 3D chess and just watching that makes me dizzy. So after a while, I go out to the kitchen and help clean up, which is something I'm good at. Maxwell never breaks a dish, Graham is saying. He's very sure-handed for someone so large. We're almost done putting stuff away and wiping the counter when Grimm shouts from the other room. All he says is, Kevin! But we can tell right away that something is wrong. We run in and Freak is leaning back in his chair, making this wheezing sound, panting real fast and his eyelids are flickering. He's having a seizure, Brim says. Call an ambulance. The fair Gwen is already on the phone. I run out into the street and start waving my arms and jumping up and down so they'll know where to stop. And I keep running back into the house to check on things. But the fair Gwen says there's nothing we can do but wait.